and you're in from point from five you're going to be under a crazy amount of stress and most of you are probably experiencing it right now but don't crack under pressure know that there's time for work and there's time for play Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome back to another video. So today's video is going to be about how to survive being a STEM stream student. And I actually got this video request a while back and after doing some thinking, I decided that I do have some tips to share because undeniably, being a science stream student is difficult. Not that being like an art stream student or an account student is easy, but I'm just not qualified to comment on that since I've never taken those subjects. But anyways, these are the tips which might help some of you guys out. Let's get into the video. So my first tip is to spend appropriate amounts of time on all the three science subjects on physics, biology and chemistry. As science students, I'm sure we all have our favourites. Like for example, personally my favourite is chemistry followed by biology and then physics. But I didn't spend more time on chemistry than I did on other subjects although it was my favourite. Like I was tempted to but I didn't. Don't spend more time on a certain subject just because it is your favourite and also avoid spending equal amounts of time studying all these three science subjects. Instead, you should spend the amount of time according to the amount of syllabus that you have to cover. Like for me, biology was the most time consuming subject because it involves a lot of memorising and understanding so I spent more time on biology than anything else and then chemistry came in second because some calculations were involved, but experiments were still very important for chemistry so I had to spend time reading and trying to memorize all the experiments and then physics took up the least of my time because more calculations were involved, the least memory work were needed. As you can see, how much time I spend on a certain subject does not align with how much I love that subject. Instead, I take the syllabus of that subject into account and I divide my time accordingly. So this is one way to avoid obvious differences in your grades. Like instead of getting an A plus for chemistry and then a B plus for physics, it is better to get A for both. So that is the way to do it. And by now, I'm sure you should know how time consuming each subject is for you. So you should try to manage your time accordingly. So the second tip on how to survive being a science stream student is to manage your time well. The moment you enter from 4 and from 5, time automatically becomes a limited resource. Maybe back in from 3, you didn't manage your time that well and you still managed to get straight A's but I'm afraid that that is not the case for from 4 and from 5 because apart from the 3 science subjects, you still have to deal with admets and I'm sure that you guys are well aware of how easy it is to fill admets if you cannot catch up. So one of the easiest ways to manage your time is to make the most out of your time. So whether you're in class or you're in tuition, be all there. I know that sometimes class gets very boring and it's so easy to tune out but no matter what you have to be there anyway so make sure that you're there both physically and mentally. Don't allow your mind to drift somewhere else. Just pay attention and make the most out of your time. Really try to learn what is being taught so that you don't have to go back and re-understand it later when it's being taught. Just try to understand it on the spot itself. And another really good tip to deal with time shortage is you can make the most out of the free periods that you get in school. Maybe your teacher is absent or your teacher is late to class. Make good use of that time by doing your homework or revising a little bit. So back when I was in high school, I made sure that I have close to zero homework every day. When I had free period in school, I would just rush my homework so that when I'm at home, I can either relax or revise without having to worry about the homework that I so the third tip that I have for you is to limit your study resource and I know that getting more resources to study is never a bad thing but to me that is slightly time consuming and you will waste your time as well because like let's say for biology you want to refer from your textbook, your reference book and your tuition notes. So each time you want to study biology you have to refer to all three. To me that is wasting unnecessary time so instead of doing that you can decide on one resource that you want to use. So let's say you want to use your reference book, then go ahead and make sure that it's in the latest edition and it has all the complete notes. And if you want to use your tuition notes, then make sure that it is all reliable and complete. So by using one resource, you can like get that A+. You don't need to I suggest that you really decide on one resource instead of using multiple resources in order to save time. Like for example, for history, you know that the only resource you need is the textbook. Everything is there, so you can stick to your textbook. That is the way it should be for all the science subjects. 
Now we'll move on to the fourth tip, which is to know what works for you. We have gone through years and years of education and we have been learning for a very long time so I'm pretty sure that by now you know what works for you when it comes to doing revision. Everyone studies in a different way so do you have to walk around when you are memorizing your notes? Do you have to read your notes out loud? Do you prefer to work in a quiet place? Do you have to write down what you want to memorize? I'm sure that by now you already know what works like. For me, I have to write down the stuff as I'm trying to memorize it. If not, I just won't remember anything at all. And on some days when I feel very lazy to pick up the pencil and actually write down what I want to memorize, I either just force myself pick up the pencil or I don't revise at all because I know it is so much easier for me to just read the textbook passively because that consumes less energy on and on days when I feel unmotivated it's so much easier to do that but I don't do that because I know that it will be pointless like I won't remember what I read anyway so really only do what works for you in order to maximize the usage of your time if you do what doesn't work for you then you might as well be watching television because it makes no difference. So if you still don't know what works for you, then you can try to figure out what doesn't work for you. Let's say you have been working very hard at history and you're still getting a bad grade, then chances are the way you're revising just doesn't work for you and it's time to step up your game. Number five is to reduce the amount of time spent on social media and I know how addictive social media can be but if you think about it, it really doesn't bring you a lot of benefits if any at all and I'm not saying that you don't use social media at all, you just try to track your time on there and reduce the time little by little and I'm sure in your mind you know what is more important, is it your online presence or your grades in the long run so make your choice and act in accordance to what you think is right. Number six is don't only work when you're feeling good. So when you're in form 4 and form 5, you're going to be under a crazy amount of stress and most of you are probably experiencing it right now. But don't crack under pressure. Know that there's time for work and there's time for play. When you're stressed, it is so much easier just to turn to social media and forget about all your problems for a while. But believe me, I've done that and in, from my experience, it just makes all matters worse because by turning to social media, you are wasting your time and your workload just like accumulates to an even bigger mountain and when you want to deal with it, it's just like impossible. So instead of turning to social media, you can take 10 minutes off for yourself, you can listen to some music, write down your thoughts or organize your space. Just try to stay optimistic although it is hard. Because as I have said before, exams are something very temporary, they are never permanent so you just have to work through these two years and success will be yours, you will be so proud of yourself and the journey will be worth it. So that's all the tips that I have, as usual I hope that this video has been helpful. That's all for today's video, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.